stop meeting like this. And then I'll buy the fifth time, it's just awkward, isn't it? Hello everyone, happy Easter and welcome to another disused railway walk. Uh, if you watched my last video, you might remember that I was saying my mate Gabe is a bit of a wizard on a drone, so I think I might have to draft him in for some one-on-one -on -one lessons. The drones. This is Gabe. Gabe's a cinematographer that I've been very lucky to have worked with in various projects over the years. And uh, we're stomping up to Benerley Viaduct in Derbyshire. Because in my mind, I thought if I'm going to take some drone lessons, where better than Benerley Viaduct? It's an amazing structure. It goes across the Erewash Valley. Um, it's quite an interesting story, actually, because basically in the mid-1800s, uh, mid the uh, Mid Midland Railway Company had a complete monopoly over the coal fields here in Derbyshire and over in Nottinghamshire. So basically, with any monopoly, they can do what they want. They can charge what they want. The man from Del Monte says no. And so all those uh, privately owned mining companies all got together and said, let's change that. And so an Act of Parliament was passed in 1872, which allowed the construction of the Great Northern Staffordshire Derbyshire Extension. That is known affectionately in the area as the Friargate Line. Um, Derby Friargate Station is, is, will probably be my next video. It's a very interesting area. All the platforms are still there. Some of the buildings are all still there. They're all listed. They're derelict, but they're, but they're listed. Um, and so, between 1877 and 1878, they built the Benerley Viaduct, which is where we're stomping up to now, to cross the Erewash Valley. What an incredible structure that is. It was basically left to rot, and then um, you know local council and the, the friends of uh, Benley Viaduct got together, and they've they've done loads of work repairing it, and so now we can get across it. There you go. We're getting up the stairs onto Benley Viaduct. So that this was obviously a big bloody embankment that went off there to Nottingham, and then this way to Derby, Frygate, and off to uh, into Staffordshire to Burton on Trent. Nearly, nearly at the top. Panting. Wow. Right. Look at this. Is Amazing to think trains like thundering over here. Double yeah. track, main line, boom. At breakneck speed. Incredible. Um, yeah, engineering must have been incredible back in the Victorian time. Oh, mate, the Victorians are just next level, aren't they? You think like our whole, I swear like our whole sewage system in the UK is still Victorian. Yeah, they had it all figured out, didn't they? They really did. That was the ironworks down there. So I'll try and, I'll try and find some old pictures um, of the ironworks um, so you can see what that looked like. It's obviously just scarred, isn't it, like the, the landscape. Wind power. They've used some uh, original sleepers here as well. Look, you can see the bolt holes. They've used them. That's the River Earwash down there. And then it crosses over the Earwash Valley line, which goes from uh, Nottingham to Chesterfield, basically. That is beautiful. Quite high up there. Yeah, it really is. That's the river here, watch that. It looks nice and clean, but I've, you know, does, yeah. I wouldn't chug down a cup of it. It almost looks man-made, doesn't it? So we're nearly on the other side now. We've nearly spanned the entire length of the Benley Viaduct. It's a beautiful one, here. It's incredible. I can't believe I've not been here before. Like, I've, I've, I've lived in, in the region for like 12 years or something, and, and, yeah. and I've, um, I've always thought about coming here and then never done it. And, and I just live over there, and I've always been here, so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. New Zealand. It's true, yeah. We've been quite, know it's been quite a trip for you 10 years yeah. ago, haven't it? Yeah. <laughs> right, so if you look over the side here, that's the main line, that's the Earwash Valley line, that. Um, and then this here, you can see the track is still there. There was a junction that came off. Where that concrete is, that was the rapid loader for the ironworks. You can just see there, if you made out, there's a little bridge over the airwash there. And that's where the, the line entered the ironworks. All long gone, obviously, as all industry seems to be these days. Oh, just look down there, yeah. I'm hoping the train will come, but it is Easter Sunday, so. Plus, 
they're probably on strike. Everyone's on strike, aren't they, all the time? These days, yeah. You see, they've put these bits here now, just to try and stop people, I guess, chucking stuff over onto the railway. You just see the junction there coming off. That's the line down to Ilkeston, Ilkeston Station. for quite a long time was the biggest town it was the biggest town in the UK without a railway station really yeah. wow that's incredible little fact for you you can have that might come up in a pub quiz one day just making our way down this is a bit nicer than the steps at the other end isn't it yeah this is a nice little route and if you look over there there's the canal so the railway went over over the canal there Viaduct up there, and it came across Bosch straight through there. Now, where I'm pointing, you can just see there's a pub there, and the railway went bang straight across there. It's a police station now, um, but the bridge is all still there on the on the road, so you can see it when you're driving into Wilkeston. Wow, look at that! Amazing. Victorian engineering. Get a shot of him. Uh, oh, it's going to take him a while to open those. So, what do they call them? Locks. Locks, yeah, the locks. So that was the rapid loader then. I'll try and find some footage or some, uh, some images of what was here. Great, um, it's yeah, it's amazing. Oh, you can see the line there going off. Yeah. Rusted to bits. I wonder how many years it will take for all of this material to decompose and go back into nature. Yeah, good question. Right. How many years does iron take? So we've come over to the other side, and now we're underneath the iron giant. Yeah, great perspective view from below. See, he's got all the jargon. Apologies for the wind again. Once again, it's not actually my fault. I'm not responsible for the wind. I have actually ordered a, um, a lapel mic that will, that will go in with the phone, but it's not arrived yet. So when that arrives, obviously the audio will be better. But look at that. It's enormous. I don't know if you can get it like from, from home, just, just how high that is and how massive that is. Um, what's, what's interesting about it as well is that it's the fact that it's iron, and obviously most viaducts back then were all, were all made of bricks, millions and millions and millions of bricks. But this, um, they were worried that, that because of the sheer weight and the amount of mining in the area, that actually if they built it with brick, then it would basically, you know, it would subside, it would collapse. So that's why they went for iron, uh, which is a, a much lighter material. It's just incredible.
going to leave by that. Thanks, Gabe. It's great to be here with you, guys. I appreciate it. Well. No, I appreciate the help with the drone. I hope you like the footage, and um, I'll see you again um, in another video. Click like, subscribe, you know the drill. Have a Please. great Easter, everyone.